Originally, I studied immunology, that is the science that deals with our body's defense mechanisms against invading pathogens. And since about 20 years, I have decided to focus our research on tuberculosis. We are mostly interested in the basic mechanisms, how the host, that is we ourselves and the pathogen interact with each other, how the host defends us against this pathogen and also how to harness our knowledge about the immunology of tuberculosis for the development of a better vaccine and for biomarkers for better and more rapid diagnosis. Tuberculosis is a global problem. One continent particularly suffers from tuberculosis and that is the African continent. And South Africa is probably the country that suffers most from HIV, AIDS and tuberculosis, two diseases in one patient. Currently we have a number of clinical studies ongoing in South Africa and other countries of the Sub-Saharan Africa. On one of these trips we had to go to Durban from where we moved on north to KwaZulu-Natal, one of the regions in South Africa that suffers a lot of the diseases, tuberculosis and HIV AIDS. Our collaboration partner is Christina Wahlgren, a Swedish doctor who works in Durban and does a lot of research also with patients living in the countryside of KwaZulu-Natal. So we came into a small village where we met this gentleman who looked actually quite happy to talk to us. And in fact, this man suffers from co-infection with HIV and the tubercle bacillus. But it's not just tuberculosis that he suffers from. It is a multi-resistant form of that disease, which is very hard to treat. I should mention here, treatment of tuberculosis, even of the so-called normal sensitive tuberculosis, is a major effort. It requires three to four drugs given over about six months. In very similar, HIV AIDS is also a disease that requires a number of drugs for treatment. So this man has multi-resistant tuberculosis, which is even worse. The so-called first order drugs are no longer active and you have to change to second order drugs, which are less effective and also often have more severe side effects. This man therefore has to swallow eight 10 drugs every day. That's a real lot. And he is not supposed to make any errors. So he carefully looks at his drugs. He knows how the different tablets look like and then also takes notes of his daily intake of these drugs. He's come into a phase where both pathogens, HIV and tubercle bacillus, are well controlled by the drugs. He has to take them for a couple more months, but he is relieved already that his life is much more normal than it was a couple of months ago. Together with Tony Moll, the infectious disease specialist who is responsible for the whole region of KwaZulu-Natal, we came to the Church of Scotland Hospital. This hospital is known in the field because of a major outbreak of so-called XDR-TB, which is extensively drug-resistant tuberculosis amongst HIV AIDS patients. Extensively drug-resistant TB is the worst form you could think of. It's resistant to almost all drugs and therefore treatment is almost impossible. This clearly was the fact in 2006 when 58 or 59 patients who caught that disease died within six months. AIDS and tuberculosis obviously are two different diseases. However, particularly in South Africa, it's often two diseases in one patient. The problem is that for historical reasons, HIV AIDS is diagnosed in one part of the clinic and TB in a very other part of the clinic. And often, unfortunately, communication between the two parts of the clinics are insufficient. So it's extremely important to foster better interactions between the clinics that deal with AIDS and those that deal with tuberculosis. These better interactions hold true for the medical staff, but also for the patients and for their family members. And therefore a lot of education is needed to bring the doctors, the patient and the family members together to realize that if you have HIV, you have an enormous risk to develop TB. 
in fact all over the African continent, tuberculosis is the number one killer of patients suffering from HIV infection and HIV AIDS is the driving force for tuberculosis. We also visited two different clinics in Durban city. One is a private clinic. This clinic is supported by taxpayers' money, but the patients also have to pay a certain amount of money. At the hospital, drugs are given to the patients on a daily basis. And because of the problem of co-infections, such as HIV and tubercle bacilli, often numerous drugs have to be distributed. That's a major administrative act to find the right pills for the right person, to find the right regimen. When a patient or someone who's worried to have a major disease comes to the clinic, he or she will first be introduced to the reception where they have to wait a very short time. And I think that's a wonderful sign of how efficient this hospital really works. Quite a different picture we were facing when we went to a public clinic. There's no doubt that the medical doctors are highly motivated, but still administration doesn't function very well and it's too many patients per doctor and per bed. So no surprise that people spend most of their time during the day waiting, waiting for the doctor, waiting for their drugs, and then waiting to get the diagnosis, the decision whether they have to stay or they can go home. Aside from the clinical diagnosis, ultimate decision whether someone is infected with a tubercle bacillus or with HIV is made by laboratory diagnostics. Many types of diagnosis, however, are now done by molecular biology methods. Every cell has the blueprint of our life and by identifying the blueprint of the infecting agent, you can, of course, also then diagnose the disease caused by that agent, be it a virus like HIV or a bacillus like the tubercle bacillus. Moreover, identification of those genes of our blueprint that are activated and specifically activated during disease can help us in identifying the disease status of a patient. In fact, that is also the basis for our biomarker studies. The biomarkers we analyze are activated genes that are indicative for a disease and we hope that one day we will have host biomarkers that tell us whether someone is diseased or is only infected and healthy. About 2 billion people are infected with the etiologic agent of tuberculosis and only about 10% of these infected individuals will develop disease. Hence, it would be very important to identify those amongst the infected individuals who have a high risk of developing disease at a later stage. If we have such a biomarker set, then we could of course treat these individuals very early, rapidly, before disease outbreak and prevent first that they develop disease, but also second that they transmit the disease to others. Laboratory diagnosis of tuberculosis still depends a lot on microscopy and enormous improvements have been achieved during the last five to ten years. So with these modern microscopy, we can much more precisely identify and diagnose tuberculosis than in previous times. Currently, we are establishing two independent research groups for the Max Planck Society. Our attempts to identify biomarkers for tuberculosis is a multicentric study with many different sites in Africa, and it is supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We do this at the Durban University, where the Howard Hughes Medical Institute has decided to build a new building and the new Max Planck Research Groups would also find space there to perform research on TB and HIV. Research on tuberculosis is laborious and long-working and it's clearly not an easy undertaking to do that in Africa. On the other hand, it also is very rewarding. We now realize what wealth of information we get from the clinical trials, which we will then further analyze in the lab and I think we are now on a good way to indeed have a small contribution to the fight against tuberculosis.